voltage equals current times resistance. But Ohm's law not only tells us how electrons and electricity behave, but also how nature behaves itself. And maybe it tells us a bit about how we behave. In this video, I will explain why the difficulty, the struggle, the toughness, the sweat and the tears that you feel in your engineering degree are absolutely essential to the success of your studies and your development as a human being. And I will explain this in a very unconventional way using elementary physics. And if you understand this message, could change your life. Who am I? I'm Alex. I recently graduated with an electrical engineering degree. This was one year ago. I got a first class degree. I had a fabulous experience. It was great. I really, really enjoyed it. Just the most important part, right? And along the way, I even managed to get internships in hardware, software, AI engineering. And eventually I managed to get a full-time software engineering role at Europe's largest bank. That's me, let's get into the video. So Ohm's law allows us to calculate a current given a resistance and a voltage. Basics, quite boring. Where Ohm's law becomes more interesting is when we have a parallel circuit, especially a circuit which is like a potential or a current divider. I'm gonna use a current divider example here. So when we have a current divider circuit, the current will have to split. And let's use an example. Let's use an example where we have a total current of six amps and we have a parallel circuit with two resistors, one resistor with a value of four ohms and the other resistor at the bottom with eight ohms. We know from elementary physics that the current will have to split and there will be more current going through the path where resistance is lower. So in this case, since four ohms, so the top resistor, is half the bottom resistor, there will have to be double the current going through it. We can also just verify this with a quick calculation where I1 would equal R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times the total current, which is six amps. And if we put the numbers in and we do the calculation, we will just get four amps. And since the total current is six amps, we know that, that in the bottom branch, where the resistance is double, the current will have to half. So by inspection, we know that we only have two amps left, which will have to go to the bottom branch. I think this is extremely self-explanatory, just looking at it. We know that the majority current will flow through the, the smaller resistance. And this doesn't just happen in electric circuits. This happens in many places in nature. Another great example is water. If we have one stream of water flowing and then it has to split between two pipes of different diameters, the diameter with the larger pipe will get the majority of the water flowing through it just like the electrons in the circuit because there's more space, there's less resistance. Right, it makes sense. So Alex, where are you going with this? Hold up. We are kind of like this. We kind of are like these electrons, like these H2O molecules. A lot of the time, we are also just operating like nature behaves. I call this autopilot. We go on autopilot. We just kind of do what we need to do. A great example of us being an autopilot is us walking. When we walk, we don't have to think about biomechanically moving my left quadricep to make a step. It just happens. And thank God. <laughs> That's fascinating, right? This is on autopilot. But what's even more fascinating is that when we walk, we optimize. We get from A to B in the shortest amount of time. We take the path of least resistance. And a great case study of that is in urban planning and transportation. And this case study is called desire paths. Desire paths are these incredible things that show, that tap into our brains and show us how nature behaves within us. As you can see these images that I'm showing you, these are hilarious images of us human beings just optimizing, just getting from A to B in the shortest amount of time. And I know for a fact, no one's even doing that really on purpose. They just, it's just, it's just human nature to do this. Why is this important? We have an autopilot. 
and it's there for a reason so we don't have to use our conscious brain our system to brain as daniel kahneman would say to make this because it would be fatigue now here's the thing to point out as much as we are quite similar to electrons and h2o particles we have one thing which is quite different and it's that we are conscious we can think. Unlike an electron, where it just knows that it would take the path of least resistance, we can actually pause, look at both paths, and think. That's what makes us human beings. It's the consciousness, it's the ability to pause and think which path to take. So why am I telling you all of this, Alex? Well, engineering is really hard. There will be times when you can take path A or path B, one with half the resistance and one with double it. And what I found over the years studying engineering is that when you take the hard path, you get way more results. You, may, you, you get way more understanding than the easy path. So you, you are a conscious person. However, we are on autopilot a lot nowadays. And now look, there's something called AI. And AI is getting quite good at answering questions, especially in undergraduate maths and physics and computer science. And now it's very easy to take that path of least resistance and get really good grades. That's the worst part, is you get really good grades now with really good AI. And you know what's scary about all of that? Is that you can go throughout three years of your engineering degree, get decent grades, with very little effort by taking that really low resistance path, getting good grades, graduating, and then realizing you know nothing. You just wasted three years of your life, your time and your money, and you have learned nothing. And that is scary. Just have this at the back of your mind. When you are feeling discomfort, when you are feeling resistance, when you are in a state of uncertainty, that feeling you are experiencing is learning itself. It is you doing what needs to be done to be a good engineer. It is the thing that has to happen so that when you graduate, you are a fully fledged person ready to go into the workforce and contribute. The world needs engineers, but us engineers need to be sharp. We need to know what we're talking about because we're building things for people. We're building things that save people's lives and they have to be good. And we cannot outsource everything to AI. We need to be sharp. And this is also just motivation for you to not give up, not take that easy path every single time. Actually put the work in, get your pencil, get your pencil, get your piece of paper and do it in silence without any help. Struggle, 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 interact with human beings, ask questions. This is learning. This is how it's supposed to be. It's marvelous. It's fabulous. That feeling at the end when you solve something yourself without help after grinding and grinding and grinding is the peak of university experience. It's better than the club. It's better than any society you go to. You demolishing a piece of work that you've done and you've put sweat and tears in is one of the best feelings ever. And to prove that I have a video from my final year submitting a coursework which I poured sweat and tears into as proof, I'll play that at the very end of the video. Now, that's everything from me. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Alex. And if you found anything valuable in this video, which I hope you did and I hope you understood my analogy, then give me a like, give me a thumbs up, hype it, comment it, hit all the buttons available. <laughs> and yeah, that's everything from me. Thank you very much. Here's the video. I just wanted to say this was the most difficult piece of coursework I have ever done in my life. And I will never forget it. I will never forget it. The way it made me think is out of this world. It made me dream of cold. It made me question every single line that I've wrote ever in my life. But I feel like I've conquered the world. <laughs>